In this video, we're gonna review some of the customization that I've done here on top of what Tecla gives you in the MBS firm folder, uh, specifically for um, basically rigid frame assemblies or three plate assemblies. Now, when I double click on the background, this opens up the assembly drawing properties. And I use this BOM-RF assembly, but I've tweaked it and customized things. Now, I really haven't done much on the drawing level because really the only thing that you really control on the drawing level is essentially um, the name of the assembly, um, then here the uh, drawing size or type that you wanna use, then you can set the auto scale values. I did tweak these a little bit so we can get more scales to automatically happen. But here, based on the, the size of the rafter or the column, Tecla is going to look at the space with the bill of material and the title block and automatically try to scale this to fit on this 11 by 17 sheet. So we've got that. Then we determine what views we want to be created. So really all of the control about the piece marks, the dimensioning and all that, that's actually in these saved view properties, which I'm going to cover next. But basically here we can determine whether or not we want to show section views automatically or here by default, I'm just showing the front web view. And then if we wanted the top flange view, we could add a row here and we could switch this to top view, switch that to on, and then which saved away view properties would we wanna use? And again, I would probably use something close to like this RF assembly um, settings. Now we don't want that. So I'm just gonna delete that out. And then, um, you know, here we have section view cutting, like, you know, basically the labels and the size of the arrows and things like that. Um, what's the start letter for our detail call outs and things like that. So that's it. That's pretty much all you're doing at the assembly drawing level. Now, when we go to click on the view border, so you'll see that there's this blue border here around the view itself. And if I'm in black and white mode by just pressing B, it'll be like a light gray. All right, so back here in color mode or black background mode, if I double click on this, um, now I'm seeing the view property. So before we were looking at the drawing properties, now we're looking at the specific view. And here we're looking at the saved away settings for this view properties called RF assembly main. Now here, this is where things get interesting. We can set the scale, the default scale that we want uh, to use. Um, we can set all of the dimensioning rules. So I'm not gonna explain all these thoroughly in this video, but I just want you to see sort of where things are at in Tecla and the difference between drawing properties versus view properties. So all the dimensioning controls and settings are in here. If I go, for instance, to clip running dimensions, um, we'll see that this is a dimensioning type filter. So it's looking for a certain type of uh, part in order to do the running dimensions on. So if I click this edit rule button here on the, the right hand side of the dialog box, it'll open up the rules. And here the filters are basically looking for a dra drawing filter called MBS clip and then dim. Okay, so I'm gonna go look at this filter here in a second, but I want you to see that basically underneath here, these are all the different settings and controls for automatically dimensioning basically these clips on this drawing. So it's filtering out, looking for parts that match this filter, and then using these uh, dimensioning settings. Now the save dimensioning settings that it actually uses here, so like there's angle dimensioning properties, the dimension properties for the actual running dimensions themselves. So all these save dimensions that you see here, these are actually saved dimension properties. So if I go over into a drawing and I double click on a dimension, these save settings here for all the different styles and sort of presentation, uh, the text size, the color, everything like that, those saved away settings are actually then mapped here inside of this drop down right here. And you have angle dimension properties and just other different types of dimensioning settings for different types of dimensions here in these settings. Now, once I change or modify these or set the filter, I give them a name up at the top, save, do a save as or a save if I'm just modifying and overwriting an existing one. And then here in this drop down, these are the saved away settings that we had just done in that rule dialog box. Now there's one other uh, set of uh, types of dimensioning. So these are sort of the new dimensioning styles and these new types of, of view properties, but there's also the legacy integrated dimensions. And so the way this works is I've got a filter here. And again, I'm gonna show you these filters in a second, but basically I can switch this to integrated dimensions. And then here are the properties for those integrated dimensions. So if I press edit rule here on this, this is going to actually open up a slightly different looking dialog box. Integrated dimensions are pretty much the old way that Tecla used to automatically dimension drawings. And so a lot of these controls and things in here are really good for, um, I don't know, sometimes complicated parts that might be at a skew, especially with an end plate, like on a rafter or on a column. And so these dimensions are actually pretty good at controlling basically what we're seeing here. And so you can customize those. 
Again, I'm not gonna fully explain all these because there's a lot of switches and you can always press F1 on your uh, keyboard to open up the uh, Tecla online help. That'll explain what these different settings are. But basically this is where dimensioning settings and rules are controlled. Now, now let's go ahead and go over to this filter option. So here on the dimensioning, I talked about this MBS underscore end plate. There's this wide flange uh, filter here. And then um, essentially there's this clip uh, running dimensions here. If we actually go back into that rule one more time, um, let's just open this up. There is that MBS underscore clip dimension filter that we are showing here. So just these these filter names here, they're actually set up inside of these view filters. So if we go to this drop down, we're going to see that MBS clip dim. So basically this is a filter looking for a certain type of part. Um, and here, for instance, I've actually added something compared to what was in the MBS firm folder. I basically said as long as the part mark does not equal SC2, then go ahead and dimension this because SC2 plates um, in this particular client setup is essentially the bottom flange brace gusset. So I want to filter those out and not have those automatically dimensioned by default. So you can create these filters and then tie them to dimensioning rules. Or if we actually go up to the attributes uh, here, there's this object level setting. So I somewhat showed these over on the erection drawings. Again, I'm not gonna fully explain these, but basically I tried to build some filters in here. Like for instance here, this SC, so this slip critical, or not slip critical, sorry, this SC for uh, standard clip prefix on the part mark, this is a filter. So if I actually go over to this filter real quick, let me actually go back to that. We'll go to this drop down. we'll go to the SC save away filter. So basically any, any part that's involved with a bolt group that has a prefix of SC means it's a standard clip, which means I don't need to actually show uh, the gauge of the bolts or the hole diameter. Okay, so this is a saved away view filter. Then if I go back in here and then I go to the object level settings dialog box, I'm using this filter. I'm using the bolt mark properties, uh, which is here, and I'll show you that in a second, to essentially control and not show any bolt mark. And that's why no holes and no gauge show up for this particular piece. So these filters that you save away, and then the dimensioning styles, as well as basically controlling part marks or bolt marks and the callouts for specific pieces can be all controlled using these object level settings. Now, if I go into part mark here, here I have the main part and so I'm showing for the main part which in this particular case is a web and it's showing the assembly mark for that first web and there's only one web on this rafter but if you had multiple web parts for splices the first one towards the bottom is going to be your main part and show the assembly mark. Then for secondary parts this is where I can actually control and show the submaterial mark and that's why I see like SC or IF for inside flange and OF for outside flange and then there's this near side far side control. And that's why I'm seeing like near side or far side of the center of the web, because that's the center of the main part. Now, near side, far side happened because basically it saw that there were two parts. It merged these part marks together automatically, and then it shows a near side, far side for plates on both sides. All right, so you can add any of these additional properties here. So if I wanted profile, I could select this and I could say add and then press modify. And then all the part marks on my view are going to be updated and modified. If I want to use any change settings that I do here for essentially my callouts, then what I can do is I can change and modify to see them take effect on this drawing. But if I want those settings to be used on all future, um, you know, rigid frame assembly drawings, then I just save those settings with this same name. So I just override any of the changes that I've saved and I just press save here. And then what will happen is since those saved view properties are again mapped here in the drawing properties, RF assembly main, then essentially I don't really need to do anything here because I just overwrote the settings with the same name. Now the last thing is if you do make any modifications, then any of those modifications are gonna appear here in the model and then attributes folder. So here, if I did some specific changes compared to what I had in the firm folder and I wanna update the firm folder, I go find it, those files in the model attributes folder. I look at date modified. I just go find those setting files with the same name and then I copy them into my firm folder to take what I modified here and have it work for everybody else in the company. Now, one last thing I wanted to showcase is uh, talking about welds. And I'm gonna go ahead and do that in the next video. Um, because model welds can essentially be turned on and off, but sometimes they tend to overwhelm the drawing compared to what most folks are used to seeing with metal building drawings, especially for three plate. So in the next video, we're going to go ahead and talk about that.